Twitch here. Do you know Johnny Geiger? No, not this Geiger, this Geiger. He is a pro skater who runs a YouTube channel and his skills, you saw that in the intro bit, he's killing it. He has a cool series of videos called Impossible Tricks of Rodney Mullen that I will link there. And he also makes mad skills of several pro skaters that are super rad. You'll find all the links to follow him in the description of these videos. The thing is, a few months ago, he uploaded some raw footage of tricks he filmed in 2017. Raw footage without any music. Just raw sounds. Raw sounds. And my 14 years old skater self, who spent hours playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater games and watching Rodney Mullen videos inside of me, was screaming. Using it, oh my god! Yeah, so let's make a bit using only sound from this tape and see what we can do. In front of the computer with a magic mirror again. Uh, if you don't care about the blah blah and want to listen to the final track directly, you'll find the timing in the description of this video. So here is the audio export of the video I used to make the beat here on this track. You'll find the link of the original video as well in the description. So I didn't know if I wanted to go for a fast-paced music like there is usually in skateboard videos or for something more like chill hip-hop like Johnny uses in his own videos. The music from his friend Roger. This guy. I haven't found any link to his music, but if I find any, I'll put that in the description as well. So in the end, the music I made turned out to be something very electronic heavy. So here are the six main sound design tricks I used to turn this skateboard sound into this electronic music. Wave tables. There is an option that some wavetable synths like Serum allow you to do. It allows you to import a sound and it will break it down into several waveforms. These are like snapshots of the sounds at different times. So you can use this waveform to be the waveform of your oscillator. So I've imported this sound in Serum. So it gave me a lot of waveforms and I selected some of them to become the basis of the sound design of my bass. What really makes it shine is the detune function. Basically it creates a copy, so here on this one I have two voices and the detune function will detune one uh, compared to the other. It also spreads the sound in the stereo field. It makes the sound a lot thicker and wider. And then I added a lot of saturation. Freezed reverb. Some reverb plugins allow you to freeze the sound so it would ring forever. I used this trick on the sound of Johnny screaming to make a very long note that would sound like this. I used it like this, but I also made another version that is filtered and then sliced so it would sound like this. Sampler. A sampler allows you to map a sound to the keys of a keyboard so you can play notes with it. So I made a copy of the sound I just showed you. I put it in a sampler. You can see the sound here. It starts to play here when I play a note. I used the envelope, the ADSR, so it has a bit of an impact at the beginning of the sound. Microsampling. Sampling is simply taking an audio recording to create a new material. And microsampling is taking a tiny bit of this audio to create something new. So I took well, the same bass sample, and I promise that will be the last time, so this one. And I've put it into a simpler. And I selected this tiny bit to be played in loop when I hold the key down. And for texture, I added a redux, which is essentially a bit crusher, with a filter that will filter out all the lows and the high frequencies. Layering. A lot of sounds I used are actually layered to make them thicker. So the first bass I showed you is layered by a copy of itself, but played an octave higher. And the last synth I showed you is actually doubled by a copy of itself, but without the redux and the saturation. Here is how the copy sounds like. And the both of them sounds like that. And then I layered a lot of different impact sounds from the skateboard to create my kick drum, my snare, my clap, essentially a lot of my drum sounds. Pitch shifting. Throughout the whole music, I pitched up and down a lot of sounds, uh, like for the kick drum, for example, that is made up of four sounds. I pitched down these two samples, so one will become the body of the drum and the other would become the boom low end of the drum. 
and I pitched up the two others so together they become like the click sound of the mallets hitting the kick drum. And all together the kick now sounds like that. The pitch can also be changed over time. That's what I did with this sound. I put it in a sampler so it plays in loop when I hold the key down and then I automated the pitch so it goes up four octaves. And so it became a riser. Here is how it sounds like with some reverb on it. So these are the main tricks I used to make this music. If you watched until now, thank you very much. Now here's the final track with some Johnny Geiger's tricks. I hope you like it.